Okay, so looking at a really interesting topic, especially especially uh, in times of, you know, growing globalization and the EU and looking at the euro, looking at exchange rates. So um, first thing to do is really try and relate it to your own life. Think about how the exchange rate affects you. Um, and the exchange rate affects my family, actually, because this is... Um, a bar that my auntie and uncle, there's my uncle, there's my auntie, um, run in Greece. And uh, here's actually me with some friends uh, when I used to work in the bar and this person here. This was this is a very old photo. This is like more than 10 years ago when, um, you know, I was younger and more carefree and I was doing my AS and A levels then. Um, but what happened was um, I would get paid in euros and um, I got paid 30 euros a night and um, I, you know, on this, I was living on this Greek island. There wasn't much to spend your money on. Um, and so I came home with a lot of money, but I had to um, transfer my money um, back into pounds when I came home. And the changing kind of interest rate changed, um, you know, the, the, the exchange that I'd get. So um, it, you know, can, if it, the pound gets stronger or gets weaker, it can make you better or worse off. And we'll go into more detail about that later on. But um, one of the things that, you know, will really affect my auntie and uncle is, and this is their most popular drink, the mojito, um, but one of the things that really affects my auntie and uncle is um, exchange rate movements because a lot of the people that they get, they get in their bar, they get quite a few Greek people drinking there. My uncle's Greek, he very much looks Greek there, <laughs> he is Greek, um, but um, they also get a lot of tourists coming to the island, and when they're paying for things in euros, if they're from the UK, they're paying in euros, but they're thinking of, well, what is this price in um, pounds, and when I worked in the bar in 2003, one euro was um, the equivalent of about 60p, and a mojito um, was um, eight pounds. So I'm just getting my calculator. It's been a long day at work. I should be able to do this in my head. But sorry, the mojito was eight euros. So um, that would be eight times 0 0.6, which would equal, uh, one mojito would equal four pounds 80. Um, but now, or in 2012, um, one euro um, is worth um, kind of 80p. So if, you know, even like nine years on, if my auntie had kept the price the same, which she, she pretty much did, because they were kind of quite hard years in the economy those years, but if she keep, kept the prices the same, so mojito was eight euros, that meant that it was six pounds 40. So four pounds 80 seems, you know, okay, it's, it's a bit on the expensive side, but that's more reasonable than six pounds 40. So you might you know, find that exchange rate movements will alter your level of demand. Um, and, you know, if maybe one euro bought um, fewer pounds, you know, 40p, um, then the price of mojito would have got cheaper. So let's let's formalise that then. Yeah, we, we've established that exchange rate movements benefit some people, um, make some people lose out. So let's let's get a bit more formal about this. So an exchange rate basically is just the price of one currency um, against another. Sorry, old old um, <laughs> presentation here. I should have updated that. I've updated some of it later on. Um, so exchange rates are determined. It's the same as um, in the unit one when we're looking at demand and supply. That's again how exchange rates are determined so the demand and the supply of um, a currency so here um, we can see um, rather than P they put R to stand for rate so um, if supply of a currency increases um, so this, this supply curve would move outwards that causes um, a fall in the, the price of a currency um, and if it decreases that causes an increase in the price of a currency. Now the government can control um, the amount of uh, currency uh, on the market but that's quite technical and it gets it you know gets into kind of economics territory so um, 
I don't you, you don't really need to know that if you're studying for the business studies exam make sure you do know it if you're studying for the economics exam though um, but the demands of a currency can also affect the um, exchange rate or the price of the currency so if demand for a currency increases maybe because lots of people want to go on holiday there or lots of people want to buy the exported products then that causes the rate to increase and if demand decreases it causes the rates to uh, the fall now when we're looking at exchange rates they have um, special language so um, when the value decreases we say it depreciates and when the value increases we say it appreciates as well so just be kind of watch out for that terminology so here we have um, the value of the um, pounds sorry the value of the dollar uh, in terms of pounds so this is um, how many dollars one pound will buy and this is over the last um, 12 months um, so uh, what we can see is the the trend is that one pound buys fewer dollars now than it used to a year ago okay so if we think back to our diagram um, we'd think well maybe the supply of dollars has decreased because that means that the price of a dollar has got more expensive I suppose so because a pound buys fewer of them so maybe the supply of dollars has decreased or maybe the demand for dollars has increased if we look at it these are just kind of mirror images of each other aren't they this is how many pounds each dollar buys and because each pound buys fewer dollars than it did before it must mean that each dollar buys more um, pounds so there we can see we've got on on uh, the whole we've got rising trend um, so that must be uh, maybe that the supply of the pounds has increased or maybe the demand for the pounds has decreased but that's quite getting quite technical so if you know you don't understand you know what would cause the exchange rate movements I wouldn't worry too much just recognize that exchange rates do fluctuate they do change they appreciate they depreciate these things happen okay so some more terminologies just to make you clear importers and exporters importers are businesses that bring materials or products from the outside of a country or the UK into the country and exporters are businesses that sell their products um, outside of the UK to other countries to other consumers living in other countries so here's some nice graphs where um, you know we do export uh, in the UK and here's some of the places where our um, goods um, get sent to so um, a lot to uh, Russia a lot to um, India um, oh no sorry that's uh, that's the percentage increase so we can see that these markets India and Russia are growing kind of markets but we actually send the most to is it the US there yeah and uh, Germany this was 2011 so a little bit out of date but all of these countries very much concentrated very near us and then the US and Canada a bit further away but we've obviously got growth um, with uh, Russia so we're starting to um, send more to Russia and then you might think well why why are we you know we still send 7.9 billion pounds worth of exports to Spain but why is that number four one well Spain's going you know has had been going through a tough economic time in 2011 so maybe their consumers didn't have very much money to spend on um, our, our products or any products for that matter and then here are some of the products that we import from other countries um, <laughs> you can pause I'm not going to read this you can pause this if you want to read it through but this is very important so um, I've just thought of a stereotypical product um, that's British that we could export if we really wanted to so Gordon's gin my favorite drink um, so if the exchange rate is one euro to um, one pound buys one euro um, well the price of Gordon's gin um, you know assuming that the company that make Gordon's gin just care about um, you know the price you know getting the the same amount um, in pounds so say they sell it for 10 pounds a bottle of Gordon's gin well they would have to sell it for 10 euros okay if the exchange rate is um, two uh, one pound buys two euros then to get the um, same um, amount back when someone buys it you'd have to charge um, 20 euros um, 
so that um, you're making £10. And if the um, exchange rate is um, 0.5 euros, then you'd have to um, buy So you'd have to buy, um, or you'd have to price your item at uh, five euros to, to make back the 10 pounds when you exchange it. So um, if what we're kind of imagining is that the exchange rate has, has moved from one to one to one to two and one to 0.5. So if the exchange rate moves from one to one to uh, one pound buys two euros, that means that it, the pound has appreciated, the euro has depreciated in value because now a pound buys more euros. Okay, so we've had, um, I'll call that appreciation. Okay, now... Um, Gordon's is an export, okay, but you can see what are the French consumers or Spanish consumers or German consumers going to think if, you know, if, if Gordon's put up the price of their product, 20 euros, they're going to get less demand for their products or they could keep it at 10 euros, but when they exchange it back, because it's one pound to two euros, they're only going to get five pounds back. So either they get they you know put the price up and suffer from less demand, or they keep the price the same at ten euros, but their revenues decrease the value of their revenue. However, in the other example, if you go from one to one to one pound buys zero point five euros, that's depreciation of the pound, so it's buying fewer, but Look at that, price just got cheaper, but you're still, you know, when you're converting it back to your pounds, you're still making 10 pounds, so more demand. So conclusion, exporters like depreciation because it doesn't make their product cheaper, like it's still, it, in all these examples, we said they were 10 pounds, but it makes it appear cheaper when you're exporting it. So more demand for you. Okay, let's look at importers though. So um, these are freesias. They're very beautiful flowers. They smell lovely. Um, and these are the flowers I actually had in my bouquet when I got married. But they are not flowers that grow in the UK. You have to import them. So when you're in a florist, um, they're, you know, big importers of flowers and big importers of products. Okay, so um, if we imagine, let's just imagine that we're, we're selling like a few freesias for a pound just to keep things simple. So if one pound buys um, one euro, um, you'd have to, um, sorry, if I go back actually, because we're an importer, so we're imagining that the business um, that you're buying them from has set the price. So imagine they've set them at one euro. So one euro means that's going to cost you one pound. If the exchange rate is one pound to two euros, and they um, price it at, they price it at um, one euro. That means that it's fifty p when you convert it back into pounds. And if one euro, um, sorry, one pound buys zero point five euros, that means, and they're pricing the free shares, you know, um, a stem of free share, um, at one euro, that means that it's going to cost you two pounds to buy those free shares. Okay, so what we've had here, one pound buys two euros, we've had, again, appreciation, same as the other one, and here we've had depreciation. Um, so if you are an importer, look, your cost just reduced. <laughs> Yay, that's good for you. Uh, and if you're importing and you have depreciation, your costs have just increased. So it's not a simple story to say, okay, we like depreciation or we like appreciation. It depends on what type of business you are. If you are importing your raw materials from abroad, you want a strong pound. If as in appreciation. If you are an ex if you are exporting your products abroad, you want a weaker pound. So depreciation. Okay, so that is um, a summary of that if you want to pause that. And again, uh, there's another summary of that there as well. There's a nice um, link to um, the effects of varying exchange rates as well, a news report there. Okay, now again, not every business is going to be affected in the same way. Um, so, some businesses that are going to be uh, more affected are any businesses that import or um, export products. 
um, and then businesses that are going to be less uh, affected by this are businesses that don't import or export products. Now I've just remembered there's something that we've not done which is, let me insert a new slide, it is um, interest rates affect, um, effect or effect on um, the exchange rate. So if, this is economics now, if the interest rate increases, the exchange rate will appreciate. If the interest rate, interest rate decreases, um, the exchange rate uh, depreciates. Now, if you want to know why that happens, it's quite economics based. You don't actually need to know. But if the interest rate increases, that means your reward for saving increases in bank accounts in the UK. And that means that people from abroad might want to put, or businesses might want to put their money into UK savings accounts. Now, to put their money into UK savings accounts, they have to have pounds because that's what banks store money in in the UK. And so they have to purchase pounds. So we have to trade their currency for pounds. That increases the demand for pounds and therefore that causes an appreciation of the exchange rate. That effect is called hot money flowing into the country. If the interest rate depreciate, oh, sorry, if the interest rate decreases, that causes an exchange rate depreciation because hot money flows out of the country because um, suddenly it's it's less rewarding to save in the UK. So people move their money to other bank accounts. Um, so they are quite connected to each other, and that's why in the other presentation I said the interest rate can affect importers and exporters as well um, by um, changing uh, how expensive their products appear to be or the cost of, of the imports.